the Aztecs built their empire on islands. Tenochtitlan in the middle of Lake Toxico, which had been formed by a crater of an extinct volcano in 1468. The whole area was within the Valley of Mexico, and rather than using the water for irrigation, they constructed an innovative series of platforms, or chinampas, that allowed tropical fruits and vegetables to set on top of the lake and have their roots have access to the fresh water. Here's a diagram of their capital city, again inside in an extinct volcano, and they were protected obviously from other tribes by having their main culture on the island in the center of this old volcano. To the left is the area where the Aztecs ruled, and to the right was an earlier civilization, the Mayans. Eventually the Aztecs would overtake the Mayans, and they would pay tribute to the Aztecs, so the Aztecs would become a major civilization. Their religion was based on cosmic mission theory. They believed the sun would wear down, so they would offer living beings, mostly for their beating hearts, to be sacrificed to the gods to keep the sun shining. Most of these sacrificed were from prisoners of war, but the terror of the ritual was a way of crowd control of its own citizens. Very bloody. If you have a chance, watch the video that's in this uh, chapter. They rip the hearts out of living people. And it isn't just one. It might be several hundred in a specific day. And while they did it first against their own people for crowd control, eventually, as they would subdue other tribes, these tribes would have to surrender different people to make the human sacrifices. Society at the top were the Tukultli, the generals, the priests, and the administrators. They would select an emperor of the military class to lead. The first was Montezuma I. It was important to note that the emperor was selected on their military skills, not based on a hereditary system. Therefore, you could argue this was the same system of the five good emperors in Rome to select competent leaders. They were followed by other castes within the system, merchants, artisans, and the majority were commoners, generally agricultural workers. The society was based upon hard work. Those that did not comply would be punished or left behind, and at the bottom of the society were slaves. They became slaves due to crimes or failure to pay debts. The slaves could earn extra money by working overtime, thus allowing for an escape or an improvement in their lives. The legal system consisted of judges that made swift decisions for high crimes that resulted in immediate execution. Those found guilty of lesser crimes might have a hand chopped off for small theft. Egyptian judges were not over the fray. If any were found to be bribed, they would be executed as well. Therefore, the legal system was an effective way to keep control of the society. Hard work was associated with a rebirth after death, and those that did not perform would go to the underworld, another system to enforce compliance of the Aztec system. By 1500, the Aztecs had conquered 400 Altepe, or neighboring city-states, including the Mayans in Guatemala, and ruled over 4 to 6 million people. The conquered peoples were eventually to be the bulk of the people executed for their sun god. Additionally, the Inca Empire, between 1438 and 1493, the Incas expanded from a small area in today's Peru to north Ecuador and northern Chile along the Andes Mountains, conquering smaller tribes along the way, stretching almost 3,000 miles. It is believed that they ruled over 10 to 12 million people and could field an army of 100,000, most of them from other conquered tribes. They built over 25,000 miles of roads, although they did not have the wheel for transport. The llama became their carts. Obviously, that restricted the amount of loads compared to horses or camels. At the top of society was the emperor, the Sapa Inca, revered by the people as a divine entity. He was forbidden to marry mortals, so that led to the practice of marrying a sister. He would then select a son to the rise to the top. Other sons could compete against each other. When the emperors died, their bodies would be mummified and displayed in the palace and treated as still living by their offering of food and water, 
along with co consultations with living beings. Instability always occurred after the Sapa Inca died. There was a mini civil war among the sons. Below the emperor was the nobility, which were formed by extended relatives of the royal family. Only males were educated, and since no money system was created, they usually enjoyed free food from the farming class. The farmers paid taxes in the form of agricultural products. The Incas did develop a great stone road network with fibered suspension bridges spanning the many gorges over the rivers. The altitude of the civilization caused the people to develop larger lungs to live in the environment with less oxygen, and thus their hearts grew 40% larger to send more blood to the brain. Their society was divided into four provinces, each governed by a member of the ruling family. Each city in the province was governed by a military commander who reported to the governor. The male head of households had to perform two to three months of labor each year to pay taxes. If you had specific skills, such as stone cutting, spear making, etc., these would be payments to the state and also help with the military to keep expanding.